Silence! It's time! It's time! It's time for another episode of the Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. Can you dig it, dig it sucker? Grab a sandwich pack, sit back, and prepare to laugh. It's Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. 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 Grab a sandwich pack, sit back, and prepare to laugh. It's Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. Podcast. Grab a sandwich pack, sit back, and prepare to laugh. It's Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. Podcast. Grab a six pack, sit back and prepare to laugh. It's Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. Pack, sit back to the back of 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 the Hey, I'm doing pretty good, pretty good. It's been a long, crazy week, but I'm here to record. And, uh, yeah, I'm not drinking any alcohol this time. I don't know why. That's actually a big surprise. <laughs> this is, I think we're all going to be sober tonight. I don't know what the hell is going on with me. <laughs> well, let's see. Unfortunately, Knuckles is not with us this week. He's uh, a little bit under the weather, I'm going to be saying. but uh... He's out with the case of the Game of Thrones marathon. <laughs> <laughs> that and doubling, like uh, dealing with a double yeast infection, but other than that. Yeah. Anyway, but with us this week is our special guest host right here. Not guest host, special guest. <laughs> Scared him for a second. Vincent, man, how you doing? Hey, guys. Uh, thank you for having me. I know uh, trying to organize it was kind of a scare because it's like, oh, who can record when and all this stuff. And we're having that Vincent guy on, and he's going to screw everything up. <laughs> uh, but fortunately, it was all able to work out. So thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for being on. I'm always all on. Right. <laughs> so without he further ado, not. so without further ado, let's just go into what we've been playing. So Ginger Boy, I'm going to start with you this week, considering you have some more knowledge bombs in the form of Infamous Second Son. Sh- sure. You really, <laughs> you you always seem to hype me every time you cut to me first. You always hype me up. <laughs> I don't have anything clever to say. Every freaking time. Nothing. No. I have no knowledge bombs. Um, I did I did 100% Infamous Second Son. Which, hey, that's good. Yeah. Not really, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you just, I got 100% in the game. Oh. Uh, hey, it was good, though. Yeah. 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 Well, no, it was like, I mean... Uh, surprisingly, for a, an open world game, it only took me like maybe twelve hours to hundred percent it. Oh, that ain't too bad. Um, yeah, I, I figured it was gonna be like you know twenty twenty five hours or so. Nope, took took about twelve hours. And then uh, the main story is only uh, God, I don't know, if, like maybe six seven hours. Not too many main story missions, huh? No, um, really. Once you get to like, you know, you can't, you know, because the the town is split in two. Um, you get to Chinatown, which I thought was about the midway point of the game. Right. And I flew through, like, the, the Chinatown part in, like, two hours, so. Oh, wow. But, I mean, there was a there was a pretty good uh, boss fight at the end, um, which is kind of hard to find. You don't see a lot of good boss fights anymore in, uh, in yeah. uh, video games. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I think I had something else to say there. Well, I was just going to say just briefly and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, with boss battles and video games, you know, just with game makers just, just drifting away from that in favor of, like, more story cinematic type of uh, stuff to try to tie up loose ends and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's just nice and refreshing just to go to a game and it's like, oh, hey, it's a boss battle, for God's sakes. Hey, this, remember them? Yeah. yeah. If... It's kind of it's kind of wacky and out of control when you deal with, like, this a minor spoiler here. You like you fight this giant rock spider thing, Majiggy. Oh God! And then it turns into like a, a then it turns into like a weird like flat. I don't know. It's weird, but it was fun <laughs> overall. Um, kind of a I don't know, disappointing last sequence there when it was kind of just like when you beat the game. It wasn't like this big huge like cut scene. It was just kind of like one of those. They just showed pictures, kind of like almost comic book style, which I believe, which kind of like Infamous One and Two had. Yeah, actually, it's like the same thing. Like uh, with uh, some of the endings for the first two infamous games they would end like uh, with the comic book type of cutscenes as well okay so it's kind of more of the same yeah, it's traditional you know. okay um but i don't know i overall i really enjoyed it um like I, i'm gonna kind of stick to what i said last week where i don't think it's a system seller i don't think it's um 
you know, it's not, it's, there's nothing like new or revolutionary about this game. It's a really fun game. I would say if you have a PS4, buy it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you know what? I'm just, I'm just going to go into a little bit of what I've been playing and stuff like that. I'll just continue a little bit of this Infamous Second Son because I finally started playing it a little bit last week. Which, uh, you know, I posted a couple of like screenshots and stuff on our Facebook, well, on Facebook in general. And uh, I'm really kind of liking the beginning parts of it and stuff like that. Just the introductory type of like tutorial levels and stuff. Hey, basic, do this, do that. Different buttons do the same type of features as the last couple games. But uh, I'm really liking the idea where I can actually escape, like, relatively quicker than I would, like, in the other games. Because with Cole, if you're trying to escape from, like, gangs or, like, uh, other type of bad guys in general, it takes you such a long time to go and, like, uh, climb up the buildings if you don't have, like, the tether ability, say, in Infamous 2, where you can actually just go, like, distance, right, just make quick escapes. No, in Infamous Second Son, because of the smoke ability, you can go through, like, various, like, uh, these, I think they're, like, these sewer type of, like, vents and stuff. Or these type yeah. of just the ventilation like uh, like shafts or something like that, and just go and zip all the way to the top of a building, or just like do a quick dash, just do double jumps and like doing quick dashes and stuff. It's really fast. It's really like uh, intuitive. I like I like the gameplay so much inside this game as well because a lot of the features of it, it's just really precise. I mean, just really precise. Just taking out a couple of uh, enemies here and there. Let's see, like in the other game, the other infamous game that I got done playing this month, I'm also going to the thing where, hey, I'm going to collect any and everything that's going to go through here, and uh, <laughs> after about a couple hours of doing that, I just decided to say, oh, you know what, I'm going to give this a rest, and uh, I'm going to play something else until I get interested again. <laughs> yeah, and that's one of the things, I, I, I almost feel like I might have played this game wrong, where... Basically, we're, you know, like we talked about last week where, like, they had, like, there's 12 districts in the game. Each district has X amount of uh, blast shards in it. And then there's, like, there's undercover agents and, like, you can uh, do graffiti on the walls. And you can do that and you just kind of slowly, it takes out the DUP, which is the bad guy, like, their army. and knocks them out of that district once you, once you do all the side stuff in there. And I feel like I almost played the game wrong where I immediately did i cleared all the districts before i even started doing really get into the meat and potatoes of the story so by the time i got to like i had everything fully maxed out when i got and i wasn't overpowered but it just kind of felt like maybe i kind of like ruined the kind of like the flow of the story where i would like i was doing three i did three or four stories in the beginning story missions in the beginning knocked out the first seven districts then I got nothing to do there because I had to, I had to uh, go to a certain point in the game to get to the other five districts in the game. Did got to that point and then just did the, the five districts that I unlocked, and then went through the food of the story. So I think I I kind of just hurt the flow of the game, and I really enjoyed the story with it and everything. Like I thought I thought Deslin was a great uh, character. I think his brother is was great. I love their all their banter together. I loved every scene they were together in. I would almost like to just see like. Get those two like voice actors together and just keep the personalities and just make them like a movie together. Like I really, those were those him and his brother and I forget his brother's name. Were I I really just love their just their community like they're talking and I love the conversations. Everything about their about the, uh, those two was great. Oh yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I'm really enjoying the voice acting inside this game, which it's kind of funny for me to say that because I don't really look for games like with just good voice acting or good like cutscenes, which hey, you know what, it does an infamous second son. But, uh, no, I'm more so really impressed by the way they've actually nailed the city of, like, uh, Seattle. Because I live in the Pacific Northwest as well. You know, I've been through Seattle quite a number of times, like, at least uh, at least a handful of times I can remember. The most recent was, like, uh, around 2012 or so, when I was going to, like, a college football game. We had uh, Quest Field, and, which is kind of funny because it was like a week after the infamous uh, Green Bay Seahawks game where that controversial ref don't, call did. No, no don't <laughs> talk about that. <laughs> Still just, a sore spot. I know, I know. <laughs> but uh, the thing is, going through like the various bunches of the districts and stuff, I totally saw like a bunch of recognizable places and stuff that I had been to when I was walking down the streets of Seattle with my uh, one of my brothers and stuff like that. And it just, like, hit a chord to me because it's like, this is the first time that I've played a video game where I just felt, oh, my God, I've been there. I've been there, too. Holy crap, this is 
really accurate. That's really cool. <laughs> I can't wait but, to make a game in Des Moines, Iowa. That's so <laughs> awesome. The cool cornfields. <laughs> All right. That's awesome. All right. What's what we got here? Bacon. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, is that it's burger be- place I eat at? Oh shit. <laughs> Oh, you can go, so... oh my god, he can totally go in there. Oh. <laughs> I can just totally like, yeah, hear that. Tyler. I've been here before. I totally ate right there. <laughs> uh, that'd be the most boring game. It'd be worse than Vancouver for a video game. Oh, I don't know. Hey, now. I'm, I'm not <laughs> hey, sure about hey, that. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> there are two Vancouver levels in Tony Hawk's uh, Underground. <laughs> I will have you know. Oh, yeah, there are. One that is the Vancouver area outside the Pacific Coliseum, and then one is in the Pacific Coliseum itself, and they're both okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, imagine imagine if the new Tony Hawk game on iOS oh, had a no. Des Moines hey, level. No, 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 I'm not. I'm not. I'm not imagining shit. No, <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. Oh, my God. It'd be so awesome. Oh, Somebody, it it'd, be be. So, it'd be so flat, you could just like go straight forever. <laughs> oh my god. Well, anyway, I think that's a... This is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> well, Vince, do you have anything to say like about like Infamous, like Second Son in general? Or have you played um, it a little bit? Or... I, haven't, I haven't played it yet. I'm not sure if you guys know, but because of the, uh, the weak Canadian dollar here in Canada, yeah. games are expensive. Oh, wow. Um, the PS4 actually went up 50 bucks, so now it's mm-hmm. 450 here in Canada. Oh, God. And everything else went up 10% as well. So Infamous Second Son here in Canada is $70. Oh. And I'm not saying that Infamous Son is worth, uh, an, uh, that it isn't worth, you know, full price. Um, no matter where you're paying for it, it's just that I frankly do not have the money to spend seventy dollars on a video game. And also, if it was sixty dollars, I might not have the money to spend on it. Understandable. Well, um, Very understandable. I, I, but I, you know, I really enjoyed Infamous One, and I really enjoyed Festival of Blood. Infamous Two is kind of more the same, mm-hmm. um, in a way that I didn't wasn't necessarily down for. Um, so I would certainly be interested in Infamous Second Son. I think it's just a matter of wait, waiting for me. That's just the game I wait for, even though I wouldn't. I would be playing it if I could. Well, here's the thing: unless you're like a diehard like Infamous fan, I would say that if you're interested in Infamous Second Son and you have like nothing else really to play at the moment, maybe just go out and just buy the game. But if you're like strap for cash or even if uh, you have like a lot of games and stuff in general just wait until it gets discounted to like maybe 30 or 40 bucks because it's it's still a good game to go and play through i mean it's really impressive gameplay smooth i mean i've not done a lot of the story things yet but it's starting to get pretty interesting in my opinion yeah and this isn't like a you know like a titanfall or something like that where you like you want to be with the hot thing right now this this isn't that like this is a game you can go back to and play in September or October or two years from now, oh, and still true. enjoy it as much as you'd back did that you could have when you if you bought the date came out like 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 I did. But right, no, this isn't. I mean, you know, I, I don't want to sound like I'm crapping on the game or saying it's not a great game. It's a good game. It's just like when I make when I think at the end of the year when we make our game of the year list, this will not be on it for me. Really? Yeah. Well, Which is hard to say right now. I mean, it's, it's hard to say right now because there's like no games like have announced for this year. So. <laughs> it very well might might be just for the sheer lack of good games. Okay. Well, anyway, going on to uh, another one of the games that I've played that's going to be really obsolete in the year. Um, WWE 2K14. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's true. But uh, yeah, the PSN this week, the week of uh, what March 31st or something like that. Actually, the first, yeah. second, whatever. The current week we're The in. current week that we're <laughs> podcasting in at this moment had a bunch of sales, like for, say, Ubisoft games, the Prince of Persia games, like being like three or four bucks or something like that, and uh, other types of Ubisoft stuff. But um, along with that is like a WrestleMania type of sale for WWE 2K14, which honestly had WWE 2K14 at like 30 bucks, which, hey, that's $10 cheaper than they sell at retail. Hey, <clears throat> excuse me. And, uh, <laughs> I went ahead and I bought that, and uh, I got all the <laughs> I got all the season pass stuff as well. Hell, I even bought like the freaking Ultimate Warrior and Biker Undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I just figured, oh, oh hell, what? No, oh, oh well, I'll go ahead and buy this. Okay, what other game could I buy with this just to offset all the wrestling? Is like, okay, Capcom versus SNK two. Here you go. <laughs> nice. But uh, more fighting. 
well, obviously, I love fighting games. <laughs> but uh, with this game, it's not really much different in terms of, say, gameplay style as, like, WB13, but there are various, like, improvements upon, like, uh, gameplay flaws that were with the last previous game version. Like, for instance... No longer are you going to be fighting against an opponent and stuff where they're just going to kick off, like kick out randomly after the damn two count after you like do a finisher and stuff, which you know that pissed me off a lot <laughs> in the last one. They've had that, they've had that problem since like the first WWE of SmackDown 2000, though. I agree. You know, we've had like you had to like hit the guy with the rock bottom like eight times to finally pin him. Oh, I know. I ran into that problem maybe like... just like in real life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like in real life. Hey, let's do a finisher eight times. Maybe he'll get past the two count. But, uh, yeah, predominantly in the 2013 version, it was like, okay, you beat the opponent to critical. Or, like, if you beat the opponent, do a finisher. You try pinning him, and he kicks out automatically after two. You know, but in this version, I don't see really that thing actually popping out. But uh, the main thing that I have liked about 2K14 so far, it's his Road to WrestleMania mode, where you get to play through all the WrestleManias up until, like, 29, obviously, the various key matches, like, say, I went through in the span of the night, like, WrestleMania 1 all the way to, say, I'm gonna say, like, 14, like, 13, 14? Nice. Oh my god, though, it was a lot of good, like, uh, a lot of good matches I got a chance to play through, like, say, from the first WrestleMania, you got these two guys, like, uh, Big John Studd and Andre the Giant and stuff like that. Then it goes all the way to the infamous WrestleMania 3 matches and stuff like the the two most notable. Like say Andre and Hulk Hogan and then Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and Macho Man Randy Savage and all this other just all this good meat and potato stuff. Let's see. I like uh, the last thing I left off of was uh, I just got done like finishing off the Hulk Hogan like rock match back in WrestleMania 18. And uh that was the match. That was the matchup I was looking forward to the most because I remember, like back back in two thousand two or two thousand three, when that pay per view happened. That uh, my parents specifically ordered that pay per view so I'd watch it because you know, yeah, nice. Hulk Hogan, the guy that like uh, revolutionized professional wrestling back in the late like the eighties and stuff in the parts of the nineties, key influential figure. Like then you have The Rock, who was like uh, one of the biggest like rising stars coming out from the WWF since its initial debut, and then doing this and do that. Just seeing those two like, uh, fighters just, like, go at it and stuff like that. It was just, like, really awesome, really nostalgic, too, with the old promos and everything else leading up to it. So, for this mode, I've just been really impressed because they've nailed a lot of the stunts and a lot of the things that you could do. There haven't been so many, like, hiccups or, like, bad things, you know? I mean, I have come across a couple things where I <laughs> I've had my opponent down to critical, and I've actually, like, hit a couple of, like, finishers and stuff like that. There's, like, maybe two occasions where I've done that, Try pinning them, they kick out after two. <laughs> <laughs> Pisses me the hell off. But uh, the thing is, the presentation is great. I mean, it's a little bit improved upon 13. Not so much, obviously. But uh, I wasn't really like as impressed with the roster this time around for the current wrestlers. And it's kind of funny that uh, a lot of the female wrestlers that uh, were supposed that are in the WWE right now, they are not... There's like maybe like about five of them at the start. Yeah. Which is like aren't the, funny. Aren't the rest like DLC characters? Well, which, why would I want to pay for these characters that no one cares about? Well, that's the thing. That's why I bought the season pass dealy and stuff because they actually included a lot of those wrestlers just for added like uh, benefit because no one's going to, no one no one in their right minds going to go ahead and just pay, oh, hey, it's the Bella Twins. Let's purchase them for separate little DLC stuff, you know? Yeah. But, uh, game's really solid. I like, Let's see. I love the little aspect of adding in the, like, these different type of finisher type of things. Like, you could lift an opponent in the air, then, like, perform your special and stuff. Do those, all these random, like, crazy shit type of uh, finishers. Like, for say, I was playing that Rock Hogan match, and I just uh, tossed Hogan in the air, and then I caught him for a rock bottom. <laughs> see, I, I want that to be in, two, in the, the, the 2015 game with Cesaro doing the uppercut, though. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, That yes. needs to be a thing. Yes, that's that got to be a thing. thing. I got it. It's got to be a specific matchup where I'm playing against John Cena or something like that. I Irish whip him, like toss him the ropes. He bounces up. Cesaro just like tosses him in the air, gives him a goddamn uppercut like a freaking Ryu from Street Fighter. That freaking show to you, kid. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll buy 2015 for that. <laughs> oh man! Uh, like... Did you did you guys ever play All Stars? 
I've is that the, the WWE All Stars? Crazy over the was top the, one. Yes, because maybe oh, from the, what you guys are talking about, maybe that is what you want. Oh yeah, well I've played like a little bit of the demo thing, but I have not played that game. I really want to play that arcade game though. <laughs> I heard it was okay. I, did, I I played the demo. I thought it was okay, I heard but it was yeah. actually pretty damn good. You know, because they got the, a lot of these old promos and stuff. Like, uh, yeah, they actually got the real like Paul Bearer before he passed on, like uh, this year and stuff to uh, voice it. And uh, you know, they got the old guys like Macho Man, all this other stuff. But uh, anyway, with uh, 2K14, I feel that. This is a very solid game, especially if uh, you're a big wrestling fan, if you want to relive a lot of the infamous moments and stuff from... Uh, <laughs> hey, tie in from another game. Wait, infamous? <laughs> Wait, infamous? <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of the famous or not-so-famous moments from WrestleMania, like uh, the... Like it just covers... Like the, the part where everybody got electric superpowers. <laughs> not so famous. That would actually be kind of funny. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Don't talk about powers. that. <laughs> WrestleMania 11? That was a good one. Every time Stone Cold drinks beer, he just gets an electrocution. <laughs> anyway. Let's see. Vincent, what you been playing, man? Um, I've been I've been playing a fair bit. Um okay. I kinda just wanted to briefly uh talk about what well, what's been what's been going on with me, sort of kind of inside outside of games. Um it was announced, uh I guess sort of let it be known on uh on the thirty first. Uh, that I was leaving, I'm le- I, I left Big Red Barrel. I left wow. leaving, am leaving. Um, it was something I've been tossing around in my on, in my head for a while. Um, just that I want to dedicate more time than I have. Um, it's just I want to write more articles. I wanted to be more a uh, bigger part of the site. Um, but uh, because of work, be- uh, because of you know a part time job, because of being a full time student. Uh, at university, I just I couldn't do it. Um, Understandable. If if only if it, it, and the only way I could do it is if I wanted everything else to suffer, um, such as grades and you know work and and, and things like that. So um, I could keep. I thought I could you know sort of keep sort of plucking away at not really meeting my own expect this expectation set by myself when it comes to what I was provide. Uh, you know the content I was creating for Big Red Barrel, right. or I could leave mm-hmm. and. I came to the conclusion of just, you know, of, of going my going going separate ways for now. Um, you know, I I emailed Tim and I said like, you know, I would love to I would love to do I want the reason I'm leaving is because I want to do more. Um, I want to be a bigger part of it. Um, sort of I I want to you know, I just have higher ambitions. You know, I have bigger goals and I have time, really. And um, you know, he was he was super super cool about it. And, um, yeah, that's, you know, that was, that was kind of big because, you know, I've been doing it for, oh God, it would have been about a year and a year and a half now. And I would absolutely love to say, but it's just not, it's just not realistic, uh, with school and whatnot. And, um, it might sound like sort of a funny time to quit because of school when semester is just about to end. (laughs) Um, spring break. And and I certainly considered that, and I certainly thought like, no, if I'm gonna do this, like I should do it sooner rather than later because, you know, I, yes, I could contribute a couple more things over summer vacation, um, but I'm still going to have to, you know, either compromise my goals and my expectations for what I wanted to do for Big Red Barrel, or I could leave. Yeah, uh, I was going to have, you know, I was going to have to face it either way. So I just figured, you know, I'll get it. I'll get it over with now. I'll rip off the bandaid and sort of and sort of go from right. there. Right. Yeah. Basically, you would, you don't want to half ass it. You wanted to go, wanna go all you're out. either all in or all out kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, like I had, you know, I had some ideas for, you know, doing more of the of the uh, columns that I had made, you know, the columns I had started um, and things like that. But it was just. I, you know, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Like with the way that I play games now, because of the time that I have, it's, it's just not realistic because I am almost playing a different game every week because that's the game I put, take off the shelf and put in my PS3 or whatever. Um, you know, it's not like, you know, I'm just not spending a ton of time playing the same games over and over again. It's just like, yeah, I'm playing a lot of Mario Tennis right now oh, yeah. because I'm on the bu- I'm on the bus a lot. Because I'm on the bus and because I don't have to pay attention to its story or anything like that. 
uh, unlike something like Tales of the Abyss for the 3DS, which I also have, which is like, that's not really a great bus game, <laughs> at least I found anyways. But Mario Tennis, I can burn through a match, I can burn through, you know, a set, or whatever, right? And save it and go back to it later on. Oh, I know, I love that. Yeah. I love that about that game. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. That's, like, one of the points, like, really, I mean, we're going to get a little deeper here, but, like, into, like, things, into life. But, like, for me, over the past, like, year and a half or so, I've been kind of that way where... That's why I play a lot of Madden any, anymore, is just because it's something, like, I can just pick up and play it for, like, half an hour to an hour. I don't have to, like, ingest anything. I don't have to, like, sit there and focus, like, about an intently enough story. I don't have to worry about, I don't have to put 10, 15, 20 hours in this game. I can play for an hour, put it away, and I'm good. Yep. You know, because... Right. I understand where you're at, because, like, you know, there's a lot of times now where, like, I mean, the last month or so, I'm just, I'm either at work. I mean, the only time I'm really home is I'm, I'm sleeping. And... <laughs> So, like, sometimes, like, I mean, the only reason I had much time to play Infamous is because I was on vacation. So, right. I mean, I don't know, it's, I understand what you're saying, though, from that point, is just, like, you're so busy at points, it's just, like, like, even though, even if you have an hour or two to play this game, it kind of feels like, you feel like you're pressuring yourself or forcing yourself to play Tales of Abyss or play Infamous than, it, than you are enjoying it. Right. It's more of a job than it is fun. Right, and I think, you know, in, you know, when Infamous was coming out, I made the decision, you know, sort of not to buy it and instead buy Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes because, hey, I have two hours, <laughs> and I probably have another two hours later on, but, like, in two hours, I can get a lot done in Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes. And mm-hmm. in the end, I bought Metal Gear Ground Zeroes, and I totally like it. It's a great game, even yeah. if it is kind of short and, it, you know, it is kind of repetitive. There's enough there for me that is good enough to have justified my purchase. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know... Like, and also it was cheaper than Infamous. Yeah, that's true. Um, even if it is, even if it is more still here in Canada, because it's fucking Canada. Um, <laughs> it was, you know, I, I still, I've still been enjoying myself. Um, and the other thing is, is just like, I, you know, as the, as you know, as the youngest member, at least I'm pretty sure I was, um, the youngest member of Big Red Bell. Like, growing up. As a kid, I always thought, like, yeah, I understand that at some point, like, you know, I'm going to, you know, graduate high school, I'm going to, you know, go to university, and at some point I'm going to become a real adult who doesn't have time for shit. And in the back of my mind, I always always thought, like, well, if I just managed my time better, I would, you know, I wouldn't have to make these compromises, right? I wouldn't have to make the hard choices where I have to choose this or that, where I would just have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. I would never have to make those compromises. But unfortunately, like, even... Me, like, I, you know, I totally had to do that in the end, and I was, it was, it was a super bummer thing to, to come to that conclusion. Right. Um, you know, cause I'm just, I'm, I'm in my first year, like, I'm gonna be finishing up my first year of university, like, you know, this, this semester. <laughs> and, um, and it's just like, ain't nobody got time for that. Like, you know, if you wanna get, you know, half decent grades, if you wanna get a half decent degree, like, ain't nobody got time to be, you know, writing about games. Um, in a way other than like, you know, doing a blog, a little bit of a blog every week or, or something like that. Right. Mm. And I absolutely want to continue to write about video games. And it's a bummer that I've taken away my, my internet soapbox, uh, to an extent. (laughs) Um, you know, I don't have that street corner to stand on and yell, yell, um, from anymore. Um, so I might, you know, start a blog later on or do something. Um, but for now, like... Yeah, like shit, man. Like real life is no is no goddamn joke to, uh, sometimes, <laughs> and um, you know I'm just trying to make my video game playing and purchasing decisions sort of relevant to that, right? So, yeah, I'm playing a lot of like stuff like yeah, Metal Gear Solid because it's short, which isn't a bad thing. Like I, I, if if you have all the time in the world, then yeah, I'm sure that game's a total bummer <laughs> for you. If you have nothing better to do than to sp- play all of Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes, all of the side missions in a day. Uh, I'm sure you were super bummed out. Um, And I've been playing, like, a lot of Torchlight 2, which I really enjoy. Uh, Just going in, you know, grinding a couple of levels or something, getting some loot, popping out, you know, doing whatever. I have uh, have a laptop for gaming, so I take that for school and... And for uh, and for and, and use that for gaming because it's not super big or bulky, but it gets the job done. So 
I can even get that done in between class, you know, get some torchlight in between classes and whatnot, and that's been really cool. And yeah, Mario Tennis, because I'm on the bus a lot. I My school is kind of far away from where I live, and it's kind of a bummer, but what are you going to do? Yeah, I can understand yeah. where you're coming from, too. I mean, I haven't... Uh... I know for like the span of the last like year and a half or so like that, I've just been seeing more and more of my extra free time just really just start to diminish, which I kind of felt like, hey, I didn't think I would have this thing happen to me all this uh, quickly, right? You know, it's like I'm still going through the college. I'm like on my seventh or like eighth year going through community college and stuff, just trying to uh, still try to establish like where I want to go. I know I want to go into like, say, music and do a lot of that various other stuff, but uh it just kind of ties in where my game time is really kind of limited in terms of uh, what I want to do instead of, like, how much time I usually would have had. Like, say, if I was still, like, in high school. Because when I was in high school, I used to play through... I wouldn't have a lot of money for games, but the games I really had, I'd play through. The Metal Gear Solid games were a good example of that. The freaking, like, uh, Smash Brothers Melee, which was one of my heavy favorites back then. Let's see, Metroid Prime, that was a good one. But uh, as of right now, I'm just like I'm just seeing the games that I have right now. Like if I'm going on a car ride or a bus ride, I'm just trying to play a lot of the like games that would maybe last a long time. But like uh, play them in bite sized chunks. Like say, for instance, uh, I'm going through Pokemon Black again, and I'm doing something that's called a Nuzlocke challenge. So basically, what a Nuzlocke challenge is is uh, it was some that was like created like. Uh, some random internet forum user, like, a couple of years ago or whenever, took a game like a Pokemon, like, uh, I think it was, like, Emerald or, like, Ruby or Sapphire, like, that generation of Pokemon. And they basically start started their game, and uh, every time that uh, they would go into a different route, they would have to catch one Pokemon. But here's the catch. If your Pokemon faints, you have to release that Pokemon. So, oh, okay. basically, the challenge is go through that entire game losing as, like, little Pokemon as possible... Because if you lose, like, any type of your Pokemon, you got to release them, and then you would try to go to a different, like, route. So basically, you would capture, like, up to six Pokemon, then you would stop, try to train and grind and do all that stuff, try to go through the various game, just uh, making sure you don't lose a key aspect of your party members or whatever, because you need them for, like, the various HMs, like Surf, like Strength, like uh, like other stuff as well, but... The point of the matter is, it's like, I'm having enough time where I can actually do that, say, from point A to point B, like I have to do some errands, okay, play a little bit here and there, do this and do that. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, kind of going on with this conversation, it's like, I, I picked up, you know, I picked up Bravely Default, uh, you know, early February, and I got like 15, 20 hours of the game, I really enjoyed it, and it's just like, I'm on chapter 2, <laughs> still 50, almost 20 hours in this game, there's like 15 chapters. Right. And I'm at this point in my life where it's like, I hear about the, like these like Skyrim, and all these like big 30, 40, 50, 60 hour games, it's just like, that doesn't, that just sounds like a chore to me at this point. Where I'm almost like, I almost want, I'm at this point where I, I like games, like Infamous Second Son took me like 12 hours. That's fine. That is perfect. That is a perfect like length of time for me for a game. There's certain games that I'll, I'll be like, if like Metal Gear Solid Five Phantom Pain comes out and it's like 30 hours, I'll finish that game. But because it's Metal Gear Solid, but there's there's certain games out there where it's just like you hear. I, don't, I was like, do I really want? It's just do I really want to invest 25, 30 hours? It's like I hear about like I really want to play. I still want to play Zelda Skyward Sword. Yeah, exactly. My buddy's been offering to, let me. My buddy's been offering to let me borrow it for like three years now. It's just like, <laughs> man, that's. That's 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 like thirty hours, man. Just going through like the main story. It's just like I don't. That just sounds way too much for me. It's I want, you know, I I don't want every game to be like four hours long, like Call of Duty. Nah. But it's just like I don't want. I I just want to avoid like it's like Saints Row Four. It's just like I got fifteen hours of that game. I'm just like, I still had, you know, I was only a quarter of the way through or like three quarters of the way through the story. It's just like I don't, I don't like. I just gotta finish this game so i just like sat down one day and flew the main story just so i can get it over with <laughs> and, that, and that's kind of what i do with games nowadays it's just like i mean if like if i don't do that they're not gonna get finished like i i i for years never had a pile of shame and <laughs> if, like the last like year and a half i've had i have like <laughs> 10 or 15 games just sitting on my desk over here that's just like needs to be beaten like i'll beat those one of these days and they're Probably never gonna get beaten. I keep telling myself I'm gonna go back and play Bravely Default. 
probably never going to go back and play Brave Fall. Try 300 backlog games. <laughs> oh my god see i mean uh, that would just bug the crap out of me i, I just actually i've just come I, to I, accept I, that hey maybe i won't play through a lot of these games maybe i will but uh the point of the matter is it's like it's like it's like i got to a point like with my gameplay thing where i used to play a lot of games all the times and believe it or not i actually have played through half of my backlog that i have Ooh. but uh just yeah that spans from all the way since i was a little kid up until now, so <laughs> so you you would yeah. And go ahead, Vince. I was gonna say uh, going to what you're saying, Tyler, about like the actual length of gameplay. You know, like Call of Duty being four hours. Um, it's very interesting to sort of for me to consider what my gaming tastes are right now, and what I can actually allow myself to do with the habit that I you know with the with the hobby that I enjoy. Right, so. For me, I'm actually totally cool in some cases, depending on, you know, it all depends on what the game is, but like 15 bucks for Jazz Punk, which is a two-hour game, is actually pretty good yep. because A, it's sort of this unique, you know, unique experience. They don't make games like Jazz Punk, other than when they make Jazz Punk, um, <laughs> and and it's it's a two-hour a two experience that I can almost like, yeah, I had this one gaming experience and I'm going to move on to the next one. Um, you know, almost as quickly as it came. Um, not saying that games like, you know, shorter games like Jazz Punk are disposable because Jazz Punk is one of the best games I've played this year. Um, but just stuff like, you know, Jazz Punk and Gone Home um, are just, you know, bite-sized games that I feel like, you know, offer more than just, you know, the length of time of which you spent with them. Mm-hmm. I feel like they, they, you know, they stick with you longer than the you know your actual run I absolutely time agree it. with you um <laughs> and you know maybe it's just that i am more into wanting to play these sort of smaller um you know complete indie games you know you i say indie games because those indie indies are the ones making those games i'm not you know nec- you know you know you don't get a ton of just sort of small complete experiences from triple a developers mm-hmm. the exception being maybe stuff like uh, far uh assassin's creed freedom cry yeah. We're just like, yeah, this is its, its own little story thing that we're going to tell you. And it's going to be 15 bucks or whatever. Um, and maybe, you know, I'm just sort of balancing, like, my desire to want to play these sort of smaller, complete experiences that I can almost get through in, you know, in, a, in one sitting. And then stuff that sort of has a lasting appeal, like something like Mario Tennis, uh, which I can just play on the bus over and over again. Mm-hmm. And just sort of grind my way through on my on my you know t- you know trips to and from school, and going back to Infamous, um, you know when you have such little time, why would you ever buy a game new? Because by the time you have time to play it, it'll probably be way cheaper. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Um, and like I certainly thought that, and as I did so, I was pre-ordering Mario Golf. Yes, <laughs> I'm totally fine. I love it. <laughs> like I've never, I've never played a Mario Golf. Oh, game before, you are going to totally love ready that for a Mario Golf game because I'm willing to pay forty. You know, I think it's like thirty five bucks here in Canada or whatever, <sighs> right? I'm totally willing to pay thirty five bucks because you know I spend a lot of time on the bus and you know nothing. You know, you know a nice, you know a nice cool morning on the bus. You're playing some golf. You know, on your way to school, that sounds fantastic. That sounds like something I could totally use my life right oh, now. Yeah. And I'm willing to pay full price for it versus something like Infamous, which is a daunting sort of 12 to 14 hour game, right? Yeah. Um, you know, even like something like Assassin's Creed, which I bought when I got my PS4, like at some point, yeah, I would totally love to play it because every, even though like I struggle with the formula of the Assassin's Creed games at this point. There's still enough for me to enjoy right. where, you know, I can play through it and have fun. Even if it is going to take me 20, 30 hours to maybe do, see, do everything that I want to do. <laughs> oh, man, I completely understand where you're coming from. I mean, oh, man, for God's sakes. It's like, I never thought there would be a time inside my life where it's like, my gaming life, to be exact, where I would much prefer just to go through and play games that are like, maybe a few hours long as opposed to, say, like, the long, like, drawn out, like games that I'm accustomed to playing, like, see, some of my favorite games of all time are RPGs. I mean, games that just spend, like, hours upon hours just, like, grinding, like, going through, engaging storylines, engaging characters. 
But then, like, the past five years, I've become so engrossed with side of the games that I've only taken maybe a few hours to beat, like, say, games like Flower, which I never thought I'd be into this sort of mm-hmm. a game, but it's so goddamn artistic and so, like, unique in the terms of how you perceive, like, an actual game being, and then you have another, like, Genova Chen type of game with a journey, and my god, that two- to three-hour game, it may be a short game, but in that span, you experience, like, feelings, like, a lot of, like, like just just a whole bunch of, like... Just a lot of emotions and stuff, just by basically just going through and just uh, having some other person, which you don't know who the hell is, right, until, like, the end of the game or they drop out or something like that. But uh, just the thought is, it just kind of ties into right now, like, say, with the PS4, I'm more I'm more excited to play, like, the indie type of games. Like, say, your uh, Towerfall Ascensions, your Fezzes, your SteamWorld Digs or something like sure. that right now. I mean, I think with Towerfall Ascension is specifically because you can, you know, that is a multiplayer game where you can have your multiplayer experience where you have your buddies over for an hour or whatever, right? You play through that game and and, and you're good, right? Um, And also, at least for me, like, I kind of wish, like, I never thought I'd say this, I kind of wish more games were episodic. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like if you know, man, if you were to tell me that the na- the next Mass Effect game was sort of this more serialized sort of TV show inspired game where each mission or each whatever is its own self contained thing, that means that I could burn through maybe one or two a day, um, or whenever I one or two a week, depending on what my time is, right? Yeah. And also, I'm someone who bought uh, The Walking Dead on disc, right. right? And I sort of burned through that game. Because like I had all the time in the world because at the time right. I did right, um, but I now I can totally understand the appeal of someone buying it and playing them episodically as a release or as a release and they have time for mm. it right because that's only going to be really only like an hour you know hour and a half experience, um, but at least you still feel like you've done something. Yes, exactly the point. And try to let's see to try to tie that more over and stuff like that. Say like episodic games. It's like I could see, uh, I could see like not in the distant future where more companies, more more game makers may decide to go inside that direction. You know, maybe not some more like episodic things. Maybe maybe some free to play things where they would like have like certain uh, price gauging things for say like sure, DC like Low I think, kind of and, you know, yeah. And and for free to play games, like the reason I you know I'm playing Mario Tennis on the bus and not some iPhone and not you know dungeon keeper for my iPhone is because I actually care about yeah. games and I don't mean to get on like the high horse but like <laughs> stuff like you know your your hot your iOS flavor of the week for, at least for me is for the doctor's office and places where you don't want to be waiting anyways but you kind of yep. have to while something like Mario Tennis is something like I actually look forward to playing every day in part of my daily routine or whatever yep. right um, cause that, you know, I have this half an hour or I have this whatever. Right. And, um, you know, I, at least for me, like the reason I try and avoid like that free to play stuff is because so much of it is you not actually playing a game. And I like playing games. I don't like hitting the, you know, the Simpson house <laughs> in, you know, Simpsons tapped out and being like, all right, well I'll see you in like half an hour, I guess. Mm. Um, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with free to play, but free to play is so right now is so based yes. on the gameplay being monotonous yep. and not being gameplay it's not it's not a game it's not right. really a game and i hate to be like well when is games a game because i'm over here spending two hours playing journey and i'm thinking it's you know fantastic or whatever but you know a lot of the free-to-play stuff is so not for me that like i could never you know dedicate my fr- the free time that i have playing it because i actually care about right. games and those aren't really games uh, but I can also totally understand why people would get into free-to-play games based on the limited time that they have if they happen to not care about games. Because you still sort of, you know, as a non-game player maybe, you might get the sense that, oh, well, you know, look at me. I'm getting this stuff. I'm getting this, these gems or whatever. And, you know, I just got to wait and come back and I can do it all over again. And then once I build up enough money, I can, you know, do whatever I want, right? right? You can sort of get that sense of progression where it's just like, for me, like, n- nah, dude, like, like I, I, I like playing games, and this is, I'm not, I don't like playing the waiting game. I like playing actual video games. Yeah. <laughs> Even if I don't have a lot of time to play them, I want to actually play them when I can. Yeah, no, that's cool. I mean, like, there, uh, Blacklight uh, Retribution on PS4 is actually uh, one of the, probably the only free to play game I've ever gotten into. I, I've tried I, some iOS games, and I just, they, like, cut my interest for like a day or two. 
never put any money into them, thank God. <laughs> but Blacklight Retribution is kind of a, I think is a good point where like it it's it's a fun it's a Call of Duty esque shooter where you can spend money if you want. It doesn't make or break the game though. Where... So I have to disagree as someone who spent money playing that game. I spent money in it. Okay, I spent about twelve bucks and. I now have a gun where anytime you change the different attachments or whatever to make it better, most of the numbers are red, mm. meaning most of the, meaning that I basically put together at least what I consider one of the be- best guns in the game, and I do feel like having paid to pl- you know paid, I have an advantage because a I didn't have to level up and grind um, to unlock the ability to purchase those attachments for the gun. And also, like, I didn't have to earn the money to purchase those, you know, the in-game currency that you accumulate um, to to purchase the weapons. Because in Blacklight, for listeners who don't know, Blacklight is one of the free-to-play games where you earn one currency very, very slowly. Mm-hmm. And then one currency you don't earn at all, but you can spend money to, to get and things like that. And by spending money to get that other currency, you can bypass all of the leveling and all the grind to buy whatever you want. For your, you know, for your character's armor and your weapons and stuff like that, and at least for me, I feel like I spent, you know, about twelve bucks, and I'm pretty unstoppable. It <laughs> seems like with my gun. Hmm. Well, the problem is, is that the problem is, is that when you start spending the end game currency, like for people who don't play a lot of games, if you spend a fair amount of time accumulating money in Blacklight Retribution, if you spend that in, uh, the end game currency which you accumulate through normal play. Those weapon, those those attachments, those all expire in seven days at most. So you're gonna have to rebuy it oh. once you get back around to doing that. And if you don't have much time to play games, but you were able to, you know, sp- you know, spend enough hours to unlock, uh, to level up, to be able to unlock the new scope for your gun, and then you earn enough money to buy the scope for your gun. If you're not getting, if you if you buy it and then you don't get around to playing it again, like that shit is gone. So, like, I can totally understand people who are like, my money, you know, I, you know, what is more important, my money or my time? And I don't, like, when it comes to free-to-play games, I don't like thinking about that shit at all because, like, it's, you know, it should just be, you know, I, I, I look at sort of, I pl- I, my mindset for Blacklight Retribution is something th- that I sort of consider, you know, bring back to Call of Duty, which is like, no, I'm just going to get the shit, I'm just going to play it how I want to play it. But you can't because, unless you, unless you pay money in Yeah, it, so. yeah. And it totally sucks that, like, that's the model they went with, where it's just like, no, you can sort of pay to skip all of this stuff, and if you don't, you're going to really have to grind for it. <laughs> and, like, you know, for a free-to-play game, like, who has time for the grind unless it's something like Dungeon Keeper where you're just tapping this shit on your phone while you're sitting on the toilet or whatever, <laughs> right? <laughs> I hear what you're saying, man. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and just move on a little bit right here. I actually wanted to, uh, before we get into the actual topics, I just wanted to just say a random story that uh, actually Vince kind of uh, reminded me of something with a mention of uh, Tim and stuff from BRB. You guys remember back in the day and stuff like that old site like SarcasticGamer.com and stuff where you have the like the UK show, the SG UK show and stuff? They had this uh, one yeah. contest in general yeah. where if you drew like uh, a picture or something like that of their fictional character tiny earl and stuff like that either getting like this yes. this dismember yes, or do this. something like that you would have to they would like give you like a prize or something like that i'm forgetting what the prizes were but uh i entered that competition i remember doing that like on that site and uh i basically drew an image of tiny earl getting uh eaten ass first by captain average <laughs> and i got second place out of that thing <laughs> Nice. So what ended up happening was Tim actually went ahead, and uh, he was known as Mighty Mutt at the time. He mailed he mailed this T-shirt to my address, my old address, and uh, I get the package right in the mail. My mom looks at it's like, what the hell is this package here from England all about? It's addressed to me and stuff, and uh, obviously my mom being my mom, she opens my package, and uh, she tr- t- gets off the shirt, this Dead Island shirt, right? And she like opens the shirt, and it just says, choose death. On the cover of it, and it's like it's like in the side <laughs> medium, and all of a sudden it's like my parents both look at it. It's like, oh, oh I don't like the message on this shirt. And I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> and not 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 only did uh, not only was it like embarrassing enough to like just get like your package, your mail just gone through by your mom, but you get this sh- this gaming shirt and stuff like that where it just says like, oh, oh hey, not only doesn't it not fit, but it's actually like. Uh, Oh, kind of suggestive if I were to wear it. So, 
Fun, <laughs> you know, funny and true story here. That that same shirt was uh, in my possession for maybe like a couple of years until I finally donated it to the Goodwill. <laughs> <laughs> Along with all the other copies, like actual copies of Dead yep. Island. Kind of like that, too. <laughs> yeah. Which, whatever. Uh, I, I really like Dead Island, but I totally understand why other people don't like that, <laughs> that game. That game and was... why they would donate it. That's one of those games you had to buy it when it was hot. Otherwise, you totally... I absolutely play. agree. Whatever. Like, the first third of that game is still hot, if you ask me. The part where you're actually on the island, on the resort, that is some hot <laughs> shit. <laughs> and I mean that in a good way. That game was boring man what are you talking about no listen if you did you what sort of controls did you play with did you do like the actual way to fight the zombies where you target the limbs yeah i did all that because it got super fascinating if you broke the bones with a blunt weapon then you slice it off to earn extra experience like that shit was cool (laughs) yeah it was awesome i said like there was like there was like no story you just kind of yeah it was kind of silly there'd be like eight of you there were like there's like 10 people like in a group together, but they always just send you off by yourself to go do this. Yeah, that's kind of weird. It's kind of dangerous. <laughs> you should probably go. But like, there's there's ten of us here. But like, you, 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 and me go. No, no, no. You go. You got it. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll just go on the other side of the island by myself. Yeah, he night. volunteers. Okay, you go off by yourself with a shark and no, the zombie infested freaking uh, wild tropics. So wherever the hell we are at. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, I actually added a topic into our agenda right here because uh it is right past Uh april fool's day right so i just kind of figure for laughs and stuff like that i would uh i think we should share like some of our like favorite little april fool's things it it doesn't have to be from this year but uh but uh it could be like like some of the more memorable like april fool's moments that you've uh, actually have uh experienced and stuff like i'll start off with giving a couple of fun examples i remember a couple of years ago I was on this um, message board, like Insider 2, which is basically like a Nintendo-themed type of website, where they would have this particular day called, like, Kong Day or something like that. April 1st, they would, like, uh, mess with the certain, like, ranking systems or something like that. In this particular year, they actually messed with uh, the lettering and stuff. Like, if people, like, typed specific words or something like that, it would just go with Kong, <laughs> like K-O-N-G. So you would read certain messages on the site and stuff like that, and uh, a lot of the letters would be so jumbled up you wouldn't understand what people were saying because it was like, okay, this is so and so and so of Kong, blah 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 Kong, Kong Kong, you know, just like all this random stuff. But uh, I made a topic like I remember making a topic here like, uh, oh hey, Final Fantasy VII went up to the DS, like blah blah blah, and so on and so forth. And so what I basically did is I photoshopped an image of like Final Fantasy VII, where like uh, it was just. Like uh, it was like a Final Fantasy VII like image on the like the like the regular DS right, and then it just have the little uh, subtitles is like oh hey it's like all oh, have fooled you you know on the t- <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, one of the other things I would say it, I was having a ball yesterday for like uh, April Fool stuff because I went onto the same site and uh, I basically just like a uh, rewrote like an April Fool's gag or something like that for one of the. Like one of the like the main like uh, operators, the mods and the admins and stuff that are there because uh, they introduced this like this fictitious like new ranking system where, <laughs> okay, so on and so forth has done this, done that, and done this. So I actually rewarded it and stuff. So like uh, one of the members say like, oh, okay, if you don't like the changes to the ranking system and stuff, I'm gonna go to your porch and I'm gonna shit on it, or I'm just gonna, <laughs> or like, uh, or like like thing about touching butts and all this other shit. <laughs> it was just funny to read. So, any of you guys got any other good, like, April Fool's things? <laughs> well, I mean, I don't have any... I, I never was one for the April Fool's things, but... I, I This year was kind of disappointing. Uh, mm-hmm. with, I, I usually kind of look forward to, like, the funny yeah. jokes on the internet, for, like, on websites and stuff. It was, there wasn't really anything big this year, was there? Not as much. I mean, the whole, the biggest thing I can actually think about is EA getting the trouble for, like, uh, doing some pot shots on Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, I heard they apologized for that, but... I remember, like, three years ago, like, someone did a thing about how Netflix was bringing back Firefly, and then there was, um, I remember, I think it was GameSpot did, uh, this whole actual, like, big trailer of a live-action Zelda, and I totally bought it, and it was like, I'm like, this cannot be real. Like, this looks awful. I was so upset until I realized what day it was. (laughs) No, I, I don't know. I always kind of look forward to like this day, like uh, on you know on the April, April Fool's Day when it comes to like online gaming sites. And this year was kind of disappointing. I agree. 
My my sis my sister did kind of get me though yesterday with uh she put the hair tie on the uh, little hose on the sink, yeah. and she's like, "Hey, Tyler, can you give me a glass of water?" I'm like, "Yeah, turn turn the water on, spray me." So. <laughs> oh, I actually actually accidentally forgot to say something. It's like also during that that web form and stuff like that. I actually like I use random Arnold Schwarzenegger quotes and stuff from not only from his movies <laughs> but like also from like some of the interviews that he does, and I totally like just uh, pasted a lot of those like responses to people. So I added in a little bit of gaming stuff. So I had this avatar of like Arnold Schwarzenegger, which is remade as Donkey Kong, right? And I went ahead and I just started posting random like, like uh, <laughs> posts and like like out, like Arnold Schwarzenegger type of stuff. So there's this one example where they have this big old brony thread on Insider Two. A lot of fans of My Little Pony, and Naturally. yeah, yeah, obviously gaming site they're gonna have pony stuff. And uh, I went ahead and I posted a picture of the demon donkey, like this demon donkey thing, this little gag thing where. There's this off-brand like My Little Pony thing that's like, it has the like the label of Demon Donkey on it. <laughs> that's what it actually says. And so, what I did is I posted the image and I'll just typed in, "I'll be back." <laughs> Vince, what about you? <clears throat> um, you know, I'm not I'm not one for the tricks. I'm not one for the yuck yucks or the jokes or anything like that. Um, I mostly just save that for every other day <laughs> of the of the year. Um, but I'm someone who appreciates, like, something really dumb, you know, I can appreciate the dumb, and so, what I actually really like is when, you know, whatever your website is, or whatever your, you know, whatever it is you're doing, you make something really dumb, like some sort of fake craftsman tool or something that has, like, 7,000 blades on it, but you actually make it a real thing for, like, you know, an insane amount of money, but for people to actually buy, like... You know, if you're going to do something dumb on April Fool's, like, I say, like, make it real. Like, yeah. You know, like, Goat Simulator oh my God, was yes. April Fool's. Because, of course it was. And that makes total sense. And I think that's great. Wait, that was I fake? That's... It originally started off as a gag. Well, yeah. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't going to be a game. Oh. It wasn't going to be a real game. And then everyone's like, no, make it a game. And then guess what? The internet bitched and complained until it became real. Nice. And then it came out April Fool's. And that's yeah. fantastic. That game looks An great. An April Fool's joke that actually paid off, you know? Looks... <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, just like I saw, what was it? I think it was Ed Boon, you know, creator of Mortal Kombat on Twitter. He had this photo of, like, this ultra extreme mega super deluxe Injustice oh, no. edition. But he went as far as to be holding a PS4 copy of it, like, you know, case oh, and no. all. And I thought, oh, okay. I mean, I have no interest in buying an Injustice at all, let alone the Super Ultra Mega, you know, it'll suck my dick (laughs) edition. Um, But, you know, so I'm on Wikipedia. I'm like, they put out another one? Like, I can't. This can't. This has to be some bullshit. Not remembering that it was April Fool's and then it didn't show anything. I'm like, ah, this must be some (laughs) shit. Um, As as someone who follows, you know, the Giant Bomb crew pretty closely, I'm I'm a big fan. Uh, um, I'm very familiar with the uh, SNK, uh, you know Neo Geo Classic Wind Jammers. Oh my god! Um, if you guys have ever seen them play <laughs> that on the show, they always talk about it a bunch. And uh, um, Dave Lang of Iron Galaxy, Iron Galaxy being the people who put out Dive Kick, they're always harassing him, being like, "Oh, you should make a, you know, you should make another Wind Jammers." Like they had him so far as to have him on the podcast talking about how they could possibly make a, oh a Wind god. Jammers HD game or whatever, and then. And then Iron Galaxy announced uh, Windjammers HD, <laughs> but it was like H hyphen D E E, and they went as far as to have screenshots, and the screenshots were just dive kick players playing, <laughs> tossing a frisbee around. And I thought this is fantastic. <laughs> Finally, Dave Lang is going to put out a video game, an actual video game. Like dive kicks, really uh, dive kicks, oh, fantastic, but it's no, it's not a game. Um, and finally, Windjammers is going to come out for the 21st century this is going to be fantastic and then it was totally fake and i was fucking oh bummed out. my god i said if you're gonna and, and that's when i came to the conclusion if you're gonna make a dumb it's, thing it's gotta be make real. it real <laughs> like like dive kick dive kick's a dumb thing that's real goat simulator it's a dumb yeah. thing that's real all right so that's sort of where i fall i don't i don't make the jokes but i you know can i can appreciate one when it's you know like if it's like some fake you know Thing where it's like, oh, we actually found this rare species of penguins that are actually flying around. Like, all right, yeah, all right. Okay. 
That sounds all right. All I don't right. Know. Well, let's go ahead and go on to our next topic right here. Well, well, we're about at the hour mark. Should we just call? It, I think we had a I think we had a pretty good sh- pretty good show this week. You always yeah, just you know call what? It? That sounds like a good idea. Actually, we have a bunch of topics that we could save for the next show. Whenever you know Knuckles, you know, wants to be on, you know. <laughs> When he's, when he's finished with Game he's of Thrones. He's ruthlessly masturbating. No. <laughs> no, I'm joking, Knuckles. I guess that used Whatever, to... man. He can be like me and ruthlessly masturbate while recording yeah. the podcast. He can do both. Okay, with that in mind, let's go to... Let's go to... It's still never be back again now. <laughs> with that in mind. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. Oh, shit. Wow, so... But, um, We can't end the show no, now. No. We have no, to keep no, no. going. Vince isn't finished yet. <laughs> Oh, no, it's not because of that, no. I was just about to say, hey, let's go to Wrestler of the Week, but then again, I, with that mental image, I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> hell, we'll just do a little quick fire dealy thing right now. Okay, what exactly is an Amazon Fire TV? Anybody? Um, It's Amazon's version of a Roku box um, you know that you can watch like Netflix, HBO Go, all that stuff on. Plus, they're going to have their own video games on there. Basically, they have the Android technology in there, so iOS, so you can actually play some of their games. They're also going to have they're making their own games for it. Um, it's going to be a hundred bucks. They announced it on Wednesday, okay. and it came out Wednesday. What? Um, yeah, wow! You can actually buy it. Oh fuck! Right There's Sega Saturn so, in that bitch, man. I mean, God. Well, they, yeah, they, 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 they've they done it before. Saturn up in here. They did the same thing with Kindle Fire, so I mean, it's not really a big shock there. Um, but like, I know like Minecraft is one of the big games that came out at launch, oh. and there's I don't know if they're gonna have like you know big titles on there. Like you can actually, they actually have a controller you can buy for it for oh, forty so that's bucks. What the damn controller thing that we were seeing about, man. Yep. So yeah, so from what I can understand, I don't know if there's gonna be like you're gonna see Call of Duty on there or anything, <sighs> but they're gonna have. It looks like it's kind of no. kind of it's gonna be. No, you won't. Yeah, no. I don't think you will. It's it looks like it's gonna be as a lot of like like you know games you can play on your phone. They don't make real games for your phone. <laughs> yeah, but you know what I mean. Though it looks like, but they're gonna be making their own games for it. Amazon has actually bought some um, game developing companies, so. They're going to have exclusive games on there. I doubt they're going to be anything uh, life-changing or worth a uh, hundred bucks for. But that's and maybe, and maybe they'll come, and maybe like the developers that they managed to convince, not buy, but convince to work for the systems, they will then eventually come to the systems that actually sell games. Shh. Yeah, and like the, Towerfall was an Ouya exclusive, and then it came out on PS4 and or PS3 or whatever, and now people are actually playing Towerfall. This is basically what actually what it is. It's it's the Ouya, but you can also like watch television on it. All right. So. It's it's like the Ouya, but it probably won't be hot garbage. It'll probably yeah. be a lot better than and, the Ouya. Probably. And that controller, <laughs> that controller can't be any, and that controller can't be any worse than the Ouya one. Yeah, it looks like it's basically a 360 controller. Well, it kind of yeah. has so to they be. They did it right, really, because that's really the standard with game yeah. controllers right now. But uh, okay, yeah. let's let's do another little quick fire right here. Save corruptions for thief. What's this all about now? Um, it, what a shame people can't play thief. So <laughs> yeah, uh, this is what they get for playing thief. Yeah, I, I, someone yeah. just sneaks into their house, breaks their save, and then no, sneaks out. So basically, when the people, the developers of Thief, um, were making the game, they didn't realize there was thirty-one days in March. So if you played the game on March uh, 31st and saved it, um, your your save was what corrupted. What the fuck? Uh, basically, so it it would it skipped from like uh, March 30th to um, April 1st. <laughs> so the, I guess the the console or, or I guess the game didn't realize it, it got all screwed up with the, with the time. Kind of like um, where remember Sony had issues the first year that the PS3 was out when they forgot to add leap year. Oh my god. Yeah. This is kind of the case. This is even worse oh when, when March 31st is there every year. It doesn't happen <laughs> once every four years. So, yeah, so they forgot to add the, the 31st so, day in March. And, um, okay. But why? You, I want to know who who's playing yeah, Thief who on the, March 31st. Who the fuck is still playing Thief? And guess what? If you're still playing Thief and you're not done, you're done oh, now. Man. You don't deserve man. to play what that just, piece of shit game. You're better than that. Listen, if you're still playing Thief out there... I'm telling you right now, you're better than that. What that I just game can't, sucks. what I'm just grasping to understand right here, and you're also a piece is, of shit. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, but uh, I'm just, I'm just laughing I at agree. the fact that the damn game can't even count past 31. 
<laughs> yeah. That's pretty funny. That's pretty bad. The developers deserve to get fired now for that one. If they and they oh, did. Seriously, that so. is that is unacceptable. That's just pure bullshit. But at the same time, it's like, oh hey, look, we don't know how to count. <laughs> yeah. Like, did no one now, pull up a calendar? Was there no like quality check that day? Or, I mean, I don't, I don't understand. That no one goes far as to say like these people lose their jobs or anything. Uh, but Thief's a bad game. Yeah. So they all lost their jobs and because the game sucked. Okay, so the so our last yeah. quick fire thing, which we're gonna, which obviously I'm just gonna go ahead and do it right now. It's like for the Xbox Live arcade games for gold this month of April is Hitman Absolution and Deadlight. Hmm. Yes. Hitman Absolution was free on PlayStation Plus over yep. a year ago. And Deadlight is a mediocre $10 Xbox Live Arcade game that came out a So, year Microsoft ago. seriously also, just swinging it out of the park again. Yeah. It's actually funny that they they bring out Hitman Absolution now when Square Enix was just like, yeah, we, if we could make things different, like we would have, you know, made games like Hitman Absolution different where it's not super handholdy because I think it was announced that like Square Enix was surprised how hardcore games like uh, Bravely Default sold really yeah. well, right? And, you know, it's funny that Hitman Absolution, which is, like, the worst Hitman game, and it's not even that bad of a game, but it is a super bummer. Like, Square Enix is, like, announcing that, like, yeah, like, we're, we don't want to do, we don't want to make another Hitman Absolution. And then Hitman Absolution comes up with three <laughs> Xbox Gold, which is just <laughs> yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. It's like, fuck, man. And, like, six weeks ago, they were selling the game on Xbox Live for $10. Oh, my God. So. Well, like, okay. Well, anyway, let's just... Hey, at least the, at least the game has come out in the past ten years. That's though. very true. Unlike all the other games they gave given us, well, I, guess I shouldn't say ten years, like five, five years. years. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead into the wrestler of the week. Which uh, the wrestler of the week, I'm just gonna go ahead and name a, not an actual wrestler, but an actual group of wrestlers z- 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 with the uh, Degeneration X. No. I, I that's all I know about wrestling is. Degeneration X. Are you ready? <laughs> no, I'm not. Just keep going. Just I don't. I don't know. Boom, boom. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was doing a theme song. Go ahead. Well, I you know. know what? I was actually going to go with uh, the NWO. So basically, what the NWO were was were like a. They're the they're the guys that are straight out of Compton, oh right? God. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Hulk Hogan, Scott Hall, and Kevin Ash. Yeah, just dribbling those beats on the. That's right. They're, they're like fuck the police. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Fuck their. Fuck the Eric Bischoff. <laughs> Hulk Hogan's been too busy producing. He needs to have time to express oh my, himself. <laughs> oh, my off God. Shirt. Say, let me tell you something, brother. I've been living in correctional facilities. <laughs> I've been living in Miami yeah, Beach. You tied that in with NWA. That's fucking brilliant. <laughs> I want a Hulk. I want a NWO, NWA, like, rap song now. It's now. Fucking like a, they have Easy e as Scott Hall and, like, freaking, like, uh, like, Ice Cube as Big Daddy Cool Diesel, Kevin Nash. Oh, God. Oh, I, oh, oh man. God! Well, anyway, the NW Eric Bischoff is uh, Dr. J. You got Hulk Hogan going. It's Snoop oh, Dogg. Never mind. I can't do a Hulk Hogan. <laughs> well, I'll tell I was going to do a Hulk Hogan. Drizzle, 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 drizzle. You been you been doing all this dope producing? <laughs> you have to try to express yourself. <laughs> you gotta get to oh my God! <laughs> uh, Let me tell you something, Jack. <laughs> I've been in my full of facilities, but hanging out with some correctional facilities, blaming on Ice Cube, brother, because the saying gets funky. (laughs) (laughs) Express yourself, dude. Uh, I just want I just want Scott Hall uh, rapping "Fuck the Police." Like, hey yo, hey yo, (laughs) fuck the police. (laughs) He just takes out his toothpick and just tosses it at a damn police officer. Oh Oh, god. Oh, man. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help your steroid-ridden ass? So I'll tell you what, Chico. Balls. It's like, takes out his eyes, <laughs> his freaking like little toothpick and stuff like that. It's like, oh, hey, yo. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, fuck, dude. I'm going to oh. wrap that up right there. <laughs> well, anyway. Oh. Well, that's, that's where freaking wrestlers of the week was NWO, which consisted mostly of the original members. Hulk Hogan, freaking Scott Hall, and Kevin Nash back in Batch of the Beach, 1996. Huge faction. Obviously, I'll go into more detail maybe in the next couple episodes if I 
want to. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> don't forget to follow us like on Drunk Dash Nerds, like uh, our Facebook page, which is exactly that, Drunk Dash Nerds. So on Twitter, go ahead and follow us on Drunk underscore Nerds. And if you really want to check us out on our message board, which I know for a fact that some of us may or may not be going on there regularly, it's drunk-nerds.proboards.com. I have been your host, the Jack of Hearts. I was Ginger Boy. Uh, I was Vincent. Also, just want to quickly say I changed my Twitter handle so you can follow me at Vincent Knit. Uh, Knit is spelled G-N-I-T-T. The G silent because I'm a silent G, so follow me. <laughs> God. Oh, what a hack I am. What a piece of shit that I am. That was awesome. I mean, fuck. Oh, that was my good. God. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's episode 42, and we are out. Straight on the Compton, brother! <laughs> 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 oh god, we're keeping that in. Oh, yeah. oh we're god. keeping that in. Yeah, we are out. Oh. Oh. Bye, guys. Oh. <laughs> bye bye. to me beers there anyways we're on itunes now so go on there check us out and if you like us leave us a review and we'll even shout you out and jack will send you his credit card number <laughs>